Welcome to our INEOS Stereolution webinar. This session, we will learn about, about Silar and Clearbrain and our clearly innovative impact modified MBS resins. We will introduce our portfolio, showing key features, customer applications, and a case study which will show us why MBS resins are your best solution. Also, there will be a questions and answers section at the end, so please let us know all your inquiries by writing them in the dialog box. For your reference, this webinar will be recorded and copy of it will be available if in our official website. So before we jump, it's very important to me to introduce the team of experts in MBS resins, which will be leading the webinar and answering to all of your questions. We have uh, Jack Snick Magana. She's Market Development Manager for Transparent Specialties in the Americas. Then we have Dave Allen. He is the Technical Service uh, Representative uh, for the Americas. Third, we have Jared Rowlett, PhD, Senior Product and Applications Development Engineer in the Americas. And also myself, uh, I'm in charge of the Product Management for the Transparent Specialties in the region. We all contribute to the Transparent Specialties Business Team in the Americas region. So before we proceed to our resins, let me talk a little bit about our company, who we are and what do we make. For those who are not familiar with Ineos Starolution, it was formed 11 years ago, a product of a joint venture combining assets for two big players in the industry in order to form the largest Styrenix company in the world. So although we have only 11 years been in your star illusion, our legacy and heritage from previous companies, plus the technical expertise support us to be where we are now. So uh, we are 3,100 employees around the world, headquarters in USA, Singapore, in Germany, and 16 production sites located in the three major continents, which we provide solutions locally to all of our customers. At the bottom of the, of the picture, you can see the seven markets uh, that Ineos Revolution has identified as, as a strategic. That includes automotive, electronics, household, construction, packaging, healthcare, toys, among others. So jumping into the Americas region, where do we produce our transparent specialty solutions? Well, we have three main locations in which we produce resins, uh, plus other three compound sites. First one is Addiston, Ohio, in which we produce our Lustron SAN. We have uh, also our Decatur, Alabama site, in which we produce our NAS or SMMA resin. And uh, we have our SPC plant at Altamira, Mexico, in which we produce our Starolux and Key resin. We also have three sites in which we produce, uh, three sites, sorry, um, compounding sites in which we produce our MBS resins, Siler and Clearwind, in which we will be talking about later in this webinar. So um, we have a wide portfolio of transparent styrenic specialties, uh, each of them with specific key properties uh, that fits with many applications divided into stiffness or impact resistance. During this session, we're going to focus on Xylar and Clearbin, which are our impact modified clear resins we want you to discover more about. So moving to our MBS portfolio, you will see it is divided into Xylar and Clearbin. Uh, for Clearbin, we have two products, the Clearbin 145 and the 165. And for Xylar, we have our 631, 650, 960. And last but not least, we have our new Xylar 763 and 763 UV for indoor applications, which we'll be very happy to comment more at the end of this presentation. It is important to say that all of these grades are available as a local production here in the America region. Um, so if you want to know a little bit more about how our MBS portfolio performs and what product is suitable for your application, then it's time to move on to my colleague Dave Allen, who is our expert on MBS technology. Dave? 
Yes. <clears throat> thank you, Jorge. And uh, thank you to everyone that's out there listening, giving us uh, some time to tell you about our xylar and clear blend materials. <clears throat> so exactly what are xylar and clear blend? Both are Ineostyrolutions methyl methacrylate butadiene styrene, also known as MBS. <clears throat> and what's the big difference between our xylar and our clear blends? Xylar is a fully compounded product, meaning every pellet is homogeneous, pellet to pellet to pellet. Clear blend is a dry blend, uh, meaning that your customer would have to be more conscious of ensuring good mixing in his molding machine. <clears throat> Both xylar and clear blend have excellent toughness, great clarity, low density, <clears throat> ease of processing, and, and that's the feedback that we get from all of our customers. When any of them switch from a polycarbonate or a PETG to a, a xylar or clear blend, they are very happy and excited because it's just an easy product to process. They're both gamma and ETO sterilizable. They both meet USP class six medical specifications. The two of them are UL 94HB and FDA compliant. And generally they will result in cost savings for your customers. Next slide, Jorge, please. <clears throat> this is a graph showing um, stiffness versus uh, impact, um, showing that we have a pretty good range of uh, the, those properties in our products. If you look all the way up at the left, you'll see our Xylar 763, the newest one. This is our stiffest Xylar, uh, our stiffest MBS, um, but it's a lower impact than most of the others. If you go all the way down to the right, you see Xylar 960. That's our most flexible xylar. It's also our most uh, toughest xylar with a impact isod of an 11, which is approaching the low end of a polycarbonate type of material. Next slide, Jorge, please. So this is a selection table. This is to help you decide whether or not one of our MBS products would actually work against uh, the four competitive ones you see on the right side. If you looked at, say, the polycarbonate column in the first row over impact, you'll notice it has a double plus sign. If you look over to the green one for our MBS products, it also has a double plus sign. <clears throat> That's really just for the Xylar 960. <clears throat> Again, with that 11 ISOD, it's a very tough product. Most of the others would only have a single plus. But again, this is a selection chart just to help you decide if it's worth even trying to uh, put one of our materials against them. And down through the whole chat, it's the same way. <clears throat> and with that, I think I will pass it on to Yaxnik. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, and hello to everyone. So based on the uh, properties and key features already described, Silar and clear blend in a wide variety of applications, from household and housewares to medical devices. As for Silar, I would like to focus on the most recent uh, on the most recent successful cases, where Silar 631 has been selected to replace PETG and polyester in fridge bins, crisper drawers, food containers, and drinkware applications. The pit that received from our customers, highlights and concourse on the ease of processing of Silar 631 over copolyester and PEDG. Also listing other benefits such as excellent clarity, outstanding performance, under drop test, it is dishwasher safe and BPA free. Next slide please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Cleveland provides a good balance between stiffness and toughness. In addition, uh, provides a good chemical resistance. For this reason, it has been it has been long it has been long used in vacuum cleaners, razor handles, and commercial bathroom dispensing systems, such as paper towel dispensers, soap dispensers, and recently in hand dispensers, as it is 
okay, as it is resistant to alcohol. For this reason, it has been all it, it is an it makes it an ideal uh, material to be used in liquor bottle safety closures. Thank you. And let's continue learning more about brand product offering from my colleague Jared Rowlett. Thank you. Thank you, Jax, and uh, thank you for everybody in attendance here. <clears throat> so, so here we just want to really highlight uh, two of the main features and benefits here of Xylar and Clearlin, Clearblend, and uh, you know, comparative to the other clear impact modified resins on the market, really we're looking at uh, specific gravity and uh, ease of processing. So these allow these materials to not only compete against anybody in the market, but also be sustainable options to these other materials as well. And in the next slide, we're gonna sort of highlight and give you a case study for specific gravity and you know, how this is a real benefit over you know, some of these other competitor resins such as copolyesters, polycarbonate, PTG, and in fact, PMMA. Um, but also, there is a, a good savings because of the processability uh, of Cyrenics. So this allows for uh, typically a shorter cycle time or processing conditions. Um, in a lot of cases, no drying uh, is needed at all. And a better flow. So for thin wall parts, this can be actually you know easier uh, to mold than some of our competitive materials. Additionally, you know from feedback from our customers, we've seen that you know reduced scrap rates as composed to these other materials, uh, which is also good um, for reduction of waste and better regrind use uh, as well. So you can actually go on our website and. Uh, there is an option for your specific process or your specific conditions and temperatures based on the material you're using to calculate not only the manufacturer savings, but also the material savings by switching to a Xylar or clear blend over your current resin uh, using for it or, you know, for a new tool that you have for it uh, as well. So this allows for not only savings for you, uh, but more sustainable options because you're reducing heat use and you're reducing plastic waste and reducing the amount of plastic you need for it. And Jorge, if you want to go to the next slide, we're really going to put this in a, a nice picture uh, so everybody can, you know, really visualize this better. So in this hypothetical case study, hypothetical case study here, uh, we're going to say a manufacturer is making a uh, thousand parts a day, and let's assume those a thousand parts are made of Xylar 631, and each one of those parts weigh one pound with Xylar 631. So you're in essence producing 1,000 pounds a day of Xylar 631. Now, the specific gravity of Xylar 631 is 1.05. You can see for some of the other resins that you could use in similar applications, such as uh, impact PMA, polycarbonate, you know, copolyester, PTG, your specific gravity is around uh, a 1.2. So if we made those same parts out of polycarbonate, with a specific gravity of 1.2, you'd be looking at uh, 1,143 pounds. Uh, so that's an extra 143 pounds per day, uh, which is roughly 14% extra. And if you extrapolated this over a year, assuming you're running 365 production, that would be an extra 52,000 pounds of material you would have to purchase and mold uh, every year. So not only are you producing uh, 52,000 more pounds of waste, but um, you're having to buy an additional 52,000 pounds as well uh, for it. Um, this is the same case uh, for, for Impact PMMA, which would be another 48,000, uh, PEGG, another 62,000, and uh, for copolyester, another 48,000 as well. As you can really see over the course of the year, uh, the density makes a big difference uh, for parts. So it's not always just price per pound. Uh, the density plays a big advantage in this. And additionally, the cost savings and energy use is, is a big deal for this too as well. Uh, so always consider these factors when, it, when looking at legends for your parts or for your new parts or for your new molds uh, for it. And with that, I'm, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Um, go ahead, Jorge. You may have caught this uh, earlier, but we are actually introducing new Xylar products. Uh, these are specifically our Xylar 
763 and our Xylar 763 UV. Uh, the difference between these is the UV has a UV package. Um, and what this is, is our newest Xylar development, it tended to, to really, you know, highlight areas that, you know, we may have gaps missing with our current Xylar portfolio. And this is specifically uh, for higher stiffness and higher heat resistance, uh, and also for some, some UV resistant options here for Xylar. And what this is, is an MBS with a high MMA continuous phase. And this higher MMA continuous phase allows us for this higher heat resistance, stiff, um, a higher stiffness, and, and better UV resistance here for it, all while maintaining the great optical clarity and the great optical properties you expect of Xylar. Uh, additionally, you can accept the, expect the same benefits for lower density, light weighting, ease of processing, lower energy use, and dimensional stability. And in most cases for this, as, long as, the, as well as the other Xylars, uh, we don't expect pre-drying as needed, but in certain conditions, it, it may be required uh, for it. Additionally, as opposed to other Xylars, um, we have found that you can use extrusion capabilities for this as well as a cap layer, uh, assuming that extrusion conditions uh, are right and are needed, polish roll uh, for this to be able to use as a cap layer. Uh, but given that, uh, we found that it can be used in cap layer applications as well, in addition to the higher uh, benefits we've already highlighted for this as well. And before I move to the next slide, I, I also forgot to mention that a scratch resistance is a big improvement with this over other Xylars. Uh, we have found that the scratch resistance is on the same level and on par as these other competitive resins. So um, if you're struggling with heat resistance, uh, scratch resistance, or stiffness, it could be a good option to try as opposed to some of our other Xylar products for it. And with that, I will uh, I'm going to be open up for questions. Thank you, Jared, and every and all my colleagues uh, for their explanations. Now it's up to you, um, to all the attendees, to say to submit all your questions, and we will be reading uh, accordingly and answering to them, to all of them. So we have the first question, which is, uh, how is the UB performance versus poly? Carbonate or PETG? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so this is intended for, for indoor uses. So this is uh, indoor UV stability. And we found in testing it has the same UV stability as impact PMMA. So that would, of course, put it better than polycarbonate and, of course, better than PETG uh, for it. We have this second question, which is, uh, what is the positioning between, uh, sorry, what is the positioning difference between Xylar and ClearBlend? Could you please, Dave, help me with that? Sure, Jorge. Jorge. <clears throat> our Xylars are um, basically our premier MBS products. Um, you'll find the best impacts uh, and the best stiffness in, in that sort of thing, um, you know, including again that 11 isod. The clear blends, um, they don't have quite the same strength, but they're very good. They do have very good toughness. <clears throat> and the big difference is um, because you don't have the compounding process, there's a, a, a big savings on a per pound basis. So you could save yourself or your customer a lot of money by using a clear blend. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. We have this second, we, this other question, which says, any outdoor UV data for Xylar 763 UV? Yeah, so we have indoor data. Uh, we have testing it, and if you contact us, we, we can share that uh, for it. We have tested it for outdoors. Um, yeah, I think for, for very short-term limited use for outdoors, you could use it, but uh, we wouldn't expect any long-term uh, outdoor use uh, for this product for it. I hope that answers the question. Correct. And also, I would like to add that if you are interested in an outdoor product of 763, please send us uh, your contact and we will be happy to start, you know, to work if a development is possible. Obviously, always we are always trying to get information from our customers to improve our portfolio. So, and we have another question is what applications has the Xylar 763 allowed you to compete in that you could not previously? 
Jacksnick. Thanks, Jorge. And yeah, this is uh, an excellent question. And um, first of all, the Silar uh, six uh, seven six three. Uh, it's an extrudable grade, so this is our first MBS uh, product that uh, can be extrudable. Uh, so we are, it's intended that we are pursuing uh, sheet extrusion applications as well as uh, ex ex profiles. Uh, second, uh, as we mentioned, uh, we, we have a version with uh, indoor UV stability, so we are also pursuing all these applications that uh, in the past uh, required uh, uh, UV stability. And last but not least, uh, as uh, Jared mentioned, uh, our uh, the heat uh, resistance and the scratch resistance properties were improved for this grade. So all these applications that require uh, high uh, heat resistance and, and uh, scratch resistance comparable to other uh, uh, competitive resins such as uh, PC, uh, impact modified PMMA, and uh, PTG, it's an excellent uh, option. Thank you. Thank you, Jack Snick. Uh, we have other questions from our attendees. Do you have a table for chemical resistance uh, for Clearvent and Xylar? <clears throat> I can take care of that, Jorge. We do have a uh, technical bulletin on various chemicals and uh, the resistance of the clear blend and the Xylar. If you can contact me at David.Allen at Ineos. Um, I could certainly be glad to send it to you or any of us would be happy to send that to you. Thank you, Dave. We have other questions from our attendees. What is the timeline for commercial availability for the seven, sorry, for the 631 grades? Uh, well, actually 763 grade, it's already available, uh, commercialized. And you can send us your request uh, to Jack Snake or myself, and we, or if you are a new customer, uh, or contact your distribution if you are already working with distribution, and we will be happy to to assess your specific case. Thank you. And we have other questions. Do you have or plan to have eco or recycle best grades? This is a very good question. Thanks for asking. In terms of sustainability, we are start working um, on having our eco grades in, in the Americas region. Phase one is that we are going to start with uh, our brands, Styrolux and Kerbes in eco, made at Altamira, Mexico, which is already, it's almost uh, uh, done. So you will see the press releases soon. And for Xyler and Clearbrain, we are still working on it, but we expect for 2024 to, to be talking about a sustainable grades. So thank you for your question. We have other questions. Uh, what is the timeline for commercial availability? I'm sorry, I already did that. Oh, okay, the, um, the question is, of the timeline for commercial availability, it was for 763. So that was a correction. Jared, could you please take over? Take over. Yeah, so this is already um, commercially available. Um, and uh, you <clears throat> can send your sample request uh, over to us. Um, and this can be easily scaled up to, to larger quantities that you, you need for it. So uh, as of right now, uh, we have commercial availabilities and we can scale up to large quantities if needed for it. Um, I believe the official rollout uh, will be here soon and there'll be a press release for it. Mm -hmm. But right now, it, it is commercially available. Correct. Um, another question from our attendees, are there any supply restrictions to obtain this product? The answer is no. Uh, of course, we will need to uh, study all of the specific needs from our customers, but we have plenty of, of capacity as well as of uh, feedstocks and raw materials. So we have other questions. I have a target customer looking to replace Triton TX10, sorry, 1001 for a food dispenser application. It's not have a good clarity high impact and FDA approved. 
the injection mold, they are injection molding and extrusion blow mold parts. Would Xylar 960 would be the best resin for this application? Jackson or Dan or David? Sorry. I can help you sure. out there, Jorge. Um, absolutely. Um, and in this case, not necessarily the 960, I would look at the Xylar 631. We have already replaced um, Triton in several uh, food container companies, very large food containers. And the reason I go with the Xylar 631 is because it has a superior drop impact test. Even though it's only around a two IZOD, a drop of say a gallon size bottle will survive a four foot drop with no issues. Whereas the Xylar 960, even with that 11 IZOD, one out of maybe five containers will develop a small leak. So I would go with the Xylar 9, uh, 631. It does have FDA approval, it has excellent clarity, and it's wonderful for injection uh, molding. We have had some people use it for extrusion blow mold, but you lose some of the clarity in the extrusion process. Other than that, it would work quite well. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we have another question. Do you do you recommend Xylar 763 UV for automotive indoor applications? I'll do that. Uh, yes, uh, I would think so. <clears throat> if you're looking to replace um, an impact PMMA or a polycarbonate or other impact modified clear resins for, for indoor UV applications for, for automotive, I think it could be an excellent choice uh, for you. Yep. So yeah, absolutely. Excellent, thank you. Uh, can Xylar or ClearRent use in extrusion and blow molding? Yes, so this is Dave again. That's as we mentioned earlier, it can be used. Um, there can be a little difficulty. It has low melt strength, so you have to run very low temperatures compared to the injection molding. And again, there will be a little bit more haze, but certainly it has been done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have another question. We have which grade has the best dishwasher resistance? Uh, Jacksnick. Sure. So as we mentioned, uh, our Silar 631 is uh, dishwasher safe. So that will be the product that we would recommend for uh, for those applications. Thank you. Thank you. What advantages do you have versus competitive MBS trades? Uh, well, I think we already mentioned uh, in the slides, but I don't know, Dave, if you would like to add something. Yes. Yeah, we. The difference with our MBS selection is that we have a full range of stiffness uh, versus impact. There's nobody out there that has an 11 ISOD on any of their MBS products, and I don't know that any of them are as stiff and hard and scratch resistant as our new 763. Thank you. Uh, do you have this, do you have any of these traits have better resistance to fatty foods? Yeah, so, so that's a good question um, for it. I mean, I guess it defines on <clears throat> what you mean for resistance or how good resistance you have. But yeah, so generally, um, the more MMA you have in the product, the, the more resistance to fatty foods you're going to have. So um, I assume you're asking for food contact, and you know we mentioned. Xylar 763, which would have great resistance to fatty food, although we we're, we're still pursuing uh, FDA and uh, you know medical regulatory for that. But uh, after that, I would say your Xylar 763 7 731 uh, would be your best choice for fatty food resistance. Thank you, Jared. I have another question. Can you elaborate around manufacturing locations and capabilities for production? Uh, as I already mentioned, we have uh, three main sites from Innis Dilution to produce our transparent specialties. For Xylar and Clearbent, we work with compounding sites, uh, which are external. Uh, but we are full, uh, we, we have plenty of capacity to, to, you know, to initiate new businesses. 
and so send us your requirement and we will evaluate your case specifically. And one more question, I think it's the last one. Do you have any grades for thick wall injection applications? Dave? You sure. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yes, you you can uh, mold thick wall applications, and I don't know how thick a wall you're you're talking about, but bear in mind our MBS products generally have like one and a half to two and a half haze, which you know in a quarter inch is not a big deal. If you're talking half inch inch, it starts to add up, and you will start to see it be uh, more hazy. But they can still be used in much thicker walls than. Most of us would think of like the paper towel dispensers. Some of those are around a quarter inch. You can easily double that. It's not it's not an issue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. We received one more question. Do you have any additive for transparency of ABS? Um, I'll, I'll attempt to answer this question, Jorge. I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure I understand the question. Yeah. I'm guessing they're asking if you can add any of these to ABS to clarify ABS uh, for it. At least that's what I understand the way the question is written. And um, yeah, I don't think you're going to add a whole lot here to the ABS for the MBSs to, to clarify it and much here. It may help some, but I don't think you're going to add this uh, to ABS and get a clear resin or a clear MBS uh, for it. So, but uh, sure. it wasn't mentioned here, but this these can also be a great option for clear MBS as well. That's specifically the Xylar 763 for it. Perfect. Great. Well, thank you so much uh, for your for attending this webinar. And if you uh, have any more questions after this session is uh, over, please don't hesitate to contact your account manager or distributor in, or Jacksnick Magana or myself for any specific information about your application or if you want to know more about our Zyler and ClearBrand. You can also visit our website where you can find in the section news and media a wide range of materials such as brochures uh, and this webinar also. Um, as well, visit our transparent specialty section, which will allow you to learn more about Xylar and Clearbin, technical data, TDS, uh, and the Xylar value calculator that Jared mentioned about it. So thanks again for attending this webinar and goodbye everyone. Have a nice day. Driving success together.